Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and every year we've got those Game Awards, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm gonna be real, this year's Game Awards are a little bit disappointing in terms of what they're kind of pushing it over to. But I feel like every year it's kind of been this huge thing where people watch massive reveals. And uh, to be fair, all right, if it is just for the reveals, uh, I can say it's a pretty fun time, okay? I'm always hoping that games like Grand Theft Auto 6 get their second trailer during the Game Awards. But then again, uh, I think it's better to believe in the fucking Tooth Fairy than hoping Rockstar gives us any more tidbits of information anytime soon. But uh, so yeah, I was at the uh, Game Awards over here and I wanted to just uh, go through the voting round and kind of talk about some of the games that are on display over here, ladies and gentlemen. So it's apparently on December the 12th, okay? Now there's about 29 votes to be cast and for anybody that has no idea about this year's Game Awards, apparently uh, DLCs are now uh, actually being treated as entire video games, even though at best they're just expansion packs. So game of the year, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience. Now you've got Astrobot, which I think is a fine platformer, but is it game of the year worthy? I wouldn't think so. Black Myth Wukong? Uh, I played through this game like probably 20% of it, and then I, I, I actually really just got bored of it, to be honest, so I'm not even going to give this uh, the, the consideration. Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree for Elden Ring. Which, uh, you know, I like Elden Ring, but I'm not going to sit here and jerk off Shadow of the Earth Tree as the best DLC. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's fine. Uh, Metaphor Re Fantasio, I still have yet to beat it. The fact that we're adding DLC and they didn't even put Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty makes me want to die, okay? Why is it that's not in the game of the year? And there are so many other game of the year picks like Silent Hill 2 Remake. Okay, what about Yakuza Infinite Wealth? When is my favorite franchise gonna stop getting snubbed, okay? When are we gonna just have a Yakuza game win game of the year? That's all I want. But uh, if I had to go game of the year, it's gonna be Bellatro. All right, if you haven't played Bellatro, this game is like doing a line of cocaine and instantly getting addicted like crazy, okay? You just can't stop. It's like one of the most addictive roguelike card games. I bought it on a whim and I literally spent the entire day playing it like from dawn to fucking dusk. If a game is good, <laughs> that's usually my metric. So I'm going to put that as my game of the year. Best game direction. Bro, what? This is the same list. <laughs> it's the same list. What the? What? <laughs> this is why no one takes this shit that seriously. Bro, you just copy control C, control V, the game of the game of the year list to this. Awarded for Outstanding Creative Vision and Innovation in Game Direction and Design. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, FF7 Rebirth is, a, is basically the original game, just, you know, bigger map. Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree is just the same game, all right, as you played before. Uh, yeah, all these games. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give it to Blatro again, boys. I'm going to have to do it there. That's fun game design. All right, best narrative. Uh, FF7 Rebirth. Uh, I mean, I've already played the original FF7. Silent Hill 2 is actually pretty good. Uh, like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth is pretty good. I'm going to have to actually give this to Silent Hill 2. Uh, this is probably a narrative that just had me gripped the entire time. So I'm going to give it to that one. Best art direction. I haven't played Neva. Uh, but if I'm going to have to give best art direction, while I haven't finished Metaphor Re Fantasio, it's always Atlas that just makes the most artistically Kino games you could ever imagine. So I'll go there. Best score in music. This is between Silent Hill 2 or FF7 Rebirth. And you know what? I'm going to have to give it to FF7 Rebirth, all right? That's a pretty good solid soundtrack. Best audio design. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Recognizing the best in-game audio. <laughs> That's going to be Silent Hill 2. That's not even a question. That game is absolutely, you know, half of the horror in that game is actually the sound design. So best performance. Um, uh, FF7 Rebirth by Brianna White. Hannah Tell. I actually have not played Life is Strange. Star Wars Outlaws was okay. I wouldn't really, you know, uh, fawn over it like crazy. I'm going to have to probably give this to Luke Roberts for Silent Hill 2. G game is solidly well de uh, delivered. Innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played. 
Well, once again, I say if, if Diablo 4 is somehow a playable game, then re realistically, it's, a, it's an innovation in accessibility because only truly those who are completely disabled in every mental faculty are playing this game. So if you're managing to play Diablo 4, you probably win accessibility. But in, in reality, I, I guess I'd probably say like Black Ops 6. Like if you actually played around with the accessibility settings in that game... Um, I would say that when it comes to customization and modifying the experience for your play style or like how you want to play, probably the better example. Though to be fair, most of these titles are pretty good when it comes to accessibility stuff. Like both, all of them have features that basically make the games uh, totally functioning. But I guess for the meme, I'll give it to Diablo 4 because really, you know, whoever's playing this game, God, God bless. You have a, uh... <laughs> God bless, you need some help. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Now, <laughs> I've never played through any one of these. I haven't played Closer Distance, Indica, Neva, Life is Strange, Senua, Tales of Kenzera, Zao. I haven't actually played any of these games, to be honest with you, so I don't, I don't know if I can give this shit a vote. But I, I guess maybe I'll go for Hellblade 2, because uh, I played the first one and I thought it was pretty awesome. So I guess I, I guess the second one might be as good. Best Ongoing. Oh man, this is like the Participation Trophy Award. Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player's experience over time. All right, so Destiny 2 keeps giving you content as confusing to play it. Need a college degree to figure out how to buy shit. Not going. Once again, I think you all have understood how much I love Diablo 4, so I'm going to skip that option. I actually had stopped playing Final Fantasy uh, 14 online. I actually got a World of Warcraft subscription, so this didn't capture me as much as I thought. Fortnite. Honestly, I've been playing so many like Fortnite like custom creative matches. I'm probably gonna have to give it to Fortnite, dude. I'm probably, unironically, I put more hours into Fortnite than any of those other games on that list in the last year. Best community support, recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. So again, you got Baldur's Gate 3, which is, it's fine. Um, I don't really know that I engage much with the community for this. FF14, uh, no, don't engage, Fortnite, no. You know what? No Man's Sky gets this. Everyone in this goddamn game is some of the nicest people you'll ever meet, okay? Seriously, join any expedition. This is one of the nicest gaming communities. They get a vote just for that. Best independent game. Oh, dude. Oh, dude, that's... Obviously, it's Bellatro, dude. Clear sweep there. Best debut indie game. <laughs> well, I, I think you guys know where the fuck it's going. It's Bellatro. Uh, best mobile... Wait, Bellatro's on cell phone? No way. No shot, bro. It's on iPhone? Oh, well, you know that's getting a vote right there. <laughs> Clearly the best mobile game. Best VR AR. I actually played one game out of this list and I really fell in love with it. Batman Arkham Shadow. So this game, VR wise, it's probably one of the best examples of like, a, like if nobody has ever played virtual reality, give them Batman Arkham Shadow. Like they will actually love it beyond belief. Cause it's not one of those VR games that like requires like so much prior knowledge of playing VR. It actually tutorializes you pretty well. And I would say the immersiveness of it pretty much matches that of like Half-Life Alex, right? I've also heard Metro Awakening is pretty good, but I haven't played that yet. But Batman Arkham Shadow, absolutely one of the best uh, VR experiences of like last year. It's kind of a shame that it's literally just locked to the Oculus uh, Rift. But then again, I guess they're really putting in tons of money into their uh, exclusive games. All right, so best action game. Uh, Black Myth Wukong is pretty good. Helldivers 2 is pretty good. Warhammer 4. I haven't played Warhammer 40k. Um, Black Ops 6. It's fine. If I'm going to have to give any game in this the best of the list, it's probably Stellar Blade. Like, that is actually a pretty stellar game. All right. Best action adventure. Let's see. Astrobot, Prince of Persia, Silent Hill 2, uh, Star Wars Outlaws, or... Well, if you're combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving... Dude, honestly, Astrobot's pretty... No, to be fair, the new Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is pretty good there, too. So it's really a toss-up between this Zelda game and Astrobot. Silent Hill 2, I don't know if I'd consider it the best action-adventure. Honestly, like, the puzzles in Silent Hill 2, at least the remake, are pretty easy to figure out. And, and honestly, it's, it's nothing that's going to blow me away. I would say out of this list, 
probably going to have to go with The Legend of Zelda. Best RPG. Ooh, no oh man. <laughs> Best game with rich player customization. All right, we got Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> Not giving it to that one, that's for sure. Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. I mean, that is... I have to give it at some point. You know what? Best RPG, I would say, is like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. They just expand it so hard on the JRPG stuff. So if you don't play Draw Like a Dragon, there's the Yakuza franchise where all the way from Yakuza 0 to 6, it's like a beat-em-up. But like since the last one, Like a Dragon, and then Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, these are two games that are kind of rebranded Yakuza titles where they're turn-based JRPGs. This is literally like the best modern day interpretation of like old school Dragon's Quest. This gets it. This absolutely wins the best RPG. So best fighting, I don't play much fighting games, but I have played enough Tekken with the boys, so I'm gonna give it to that one. Although I've heard Dragon Ball Sparkling, uh, Sparking Zero is pretty good. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for Tekken 8. All right, let's see, best family game. Oh man, the best family game. That one goes to Astropod because that's the only one that I've really played in that list that I would consider playing with like kids if I had them. Best sim or strategy game. Ooh, all right. So it's either Frostpunk 2 in this or it's Manor Lords. And uh, I have played a little bit more of Manor Lords. So I'm going to go with this one uh, just for my pick. Best sports or racing game? Oh yeah, the one field I don't play. Let's see, which 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 microtransaction slop do you want, boys? I'm gonna go with WWE 2K24, because all I remember from the WWE franchise is basically playing the cage match as a kid, and then when me and Charlie were beating the shit out of each other, because Champ Chong made a video out of it, and I thought it was pretty awesome, so I'm gonna go with that one. And uh, yeah, that's uh, as far as my uh, sports games go. Best multiplayer? Oof. Well, basically this comes down to which one has the most wild onset community. And I'm gonna go for Black Ops 6 here. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna have to give this one to Helldivers too. I haven't played it as much as I should have, but generally I like this experience cause, just cause it's more co-op oriented. Best adaptation, recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game. You know, I really wish I could give this a vote, but this is so bad, and I'm actually so triggered watching that, that I'm going to now add it into my script of videos to make, because this Amazon show, like Like a Dragon Yakuza, is like so bad, that I swear to God the Halo TV show looks like fucking gangbusters in comparison. I'm gonna have to go with Knuckles on this one, just because I gotta give my boy Sonic some credit, okay? My Sonic franchise gotta get some credit here. Most anticipated game. Okay, so for me, this is going to be a bit of a curveball to some people, okay? <laughs> you guys, I might lose the gamer card here. So my most anticipated game out of every single thing on this list is actually not GTA 6. I'm actually more excited for Death Stranding 2 on the beach. I have a bit of a personal connection to the original Death Stranding. Like, it came out at a time when I was seriously depressed. And, uh, like, you know, I had, I had a lot of, you know, there was just, like, a lot going on. And it was the only time where I got to actually go into a world, start new, and just get lost in something that, like, let me learn to feel by myself. And just learn to be, like, just, just be with myself. I like the story. I like the world. I like the premise. I don't care if people say it's a walking simulator. I actually am really hyped to play Death Stranding 2 on the beach next year. Like, I I'm excited for GTA 6 and Metroid Prime 4 and Monster. Like, every single game on this list is awesome. I'm more excited for Death Stranding 2, so I'm just going to give that vote there. Content Creator of the Year. Well, out of everyone that, that seems the most wholesome, it's probably going to be Queso, so I'll give it to him. Uh, best Esports Game. Oh, man. <laughs> you know... <laughs> I haven't played anything in this list. The last thing I played a month ago was some Counter-Strike. So I guess I'll give it to that one. And it's the one that works underneath Linux, so it gets it. Best Esports Athlete. Ooh, let's see which one is awesome here. They all look like gangsters to me, but I'm gonna have to go with Alex Sib, dude. That hair's just got it going on, so you get that, pal. Best Esports Team. I don't know FaZe Clan, but I'm going to have to give it to Billy Billy Gaming here. <laughs> just because I like BillyBilly.com. 
Uh, and uh, notify me when voting opens with more rounds. So apparently there's more voting that goes in. But yeah, those were all the votes that I wanted to cast. And uh, that's pretty much what it came down to. So yeah, at the end of the day, this Game Awards, it's not something that I really think is that great. Like out of all the awards that we've seen, of, of all the nominations, they've really missed a whole lot. Like, okay, Silent Hill 2 should have probably went up for Game of the Year nomination. As should Like a Dragon, like Infinite Wealth. As should Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. So yeah, I, I feel like I feel like the list for Game of the Year is a little bit restrictive. But overall, you know, I think what most people are going to be watching this for is probably not the awards. They're probably going to be looking at the Game Awards for the game reveals. And I think hopefully, if God willing, we might get something more for Grand Theft Auto 6. Maybe something for Death Stranding too. But uh, yeah, moral of the story, okay? Game Awards, they're kind of... <laughs> kind of getting shitty year after year on a personal level. But at least Bellatro might win. <laughs> Please, God, let Bellatro win. <laughs> let my addiction mean something. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. I am out.